today we're gonna make a little pros and cons video because I keep getting questions about how I like the bike, you know, how, how has it treated me? But uh, I suppose we'll start with the cons. And uh, coming from a 250 anyway, I'm, I'm sure I'm biased because I've come through a properly wood set up 250 and just jumped onto this. But suspension in wheel size is like suspension for example I cannot get it to I can't get it set up right I'm only 150 pounds so I shouldn't be over what this spring rate is according to the manual and I just I don't know I can't get it right you go over high speed bumpy stuff and it just jackhammers you the whole time and I mean I've got it significantly better than it was when I first bought it like right off the floor but it's still nowhere near perfect and I, I don't, honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it perfect. And wheel, wheel size has a lot to deal with that too. Because instead of floating over obstacles, I'm driving into them because the tires are so small. trying to figure out what that was and the manual doesn't even tell you how to set up float high any anything so it's kind of like just a wing it you gotta try to figure it out so we eventually messed with float height and that was a huge portion of it because it, it's significantly better but there's still days where it just randomly won't that's the thing is it's not predictable some days it'll run good it'll idle great some days it will not idle even between hot or cold like it'll be the same temperature but randomly it won't idle that day want to go to the other end yeah, sure. so yeah for con suspension wheel size and the car was not set up nearly right and it's still not perfect my whole life so it's not like I don't know how to tune a car but this one is proving to be very tricky to get it perfect but for pros the reason I bought the bike I had a 250 like I said but with all the crazy tight stuff we usually ride because you guys don't even see all the stuff we do the 250 was just too physically big trying to manhandle that through logs and rye it's just it wasn't reasonable for me being disabled and all that. I, I don't have the, the top end strength, a lot of people do. So it, it, making the move to a smaller bike, you know, that was that was it. Because I can actually throw this one around on the tight side, which is what this bike stood for, which is why I bought it. So the whole other arguments of me complaining really isn't reasonable because that's not what I bought it for is high speedy stuff. I you know I like single tracky stuff myself. Stuff I bought it for, it's great. The bike doesn't weigh anything. I can pick it up and move it around, so there's no reason anybody else could. Uh, reliability, aside from the carb stuff in the beginning, it's, it's been pretty good. And, uh, it's only one time it's left me stranded, and it's because I I ran out of two-stroke mix. The normal stuff I run, which is Yamalu stuff, in my dealer at the time, because. I didn't have time to order online. So I bought a castor oil. And this bike did not like it. I even ran less oil to gas ratio like recommended and it. It fouled like four plugs that day. If you go back on my channel, it's the video that says that uh, KX100 left me stranded or something like that. But uh, yeah, aside from that and the wheel, weird oil situation, it, back on my 2S and I'm running a hotter plug too because they come with the, the 10R plug. I think I have an 8 or a 9 in it now. I don't remember. And it's it's really good. It runs good. It runs way better. And that, that was part of it too. It, it, it idles better with this plug too now. And for 
reliability, I mean, aside from that, it's been great. The bike has like probably 60 something hours on it now, realistically. And I haven't done anything to it aside from oil changes and air filter, of course. Still has good compression, the bike still rips. Can't really complain. Yeah, that's covered in snow. I'm not even bothering going up that. Yeah, I'm not even bothering going up that snowy, ice-covered hill. Well, we'll see if he gets stuck. I don't really feel like doing it. I went up it before all the snow and ice was there and it was a pain. Yeah, he's already sliding. I'm not doing it. He almost did, but I didn't particularly feel like hitting the ground, so <laughs> didn't even bother. Again, we do a lot of tight woodsy uphill stuff and never never really do I have to like slip the clutch a whole bunch. It, it, it just does it. I don't, I'm surprised to be honest. Little walk around. Anyway, like I said, tusk handguards. Aside from smoke skins and those, the bike's bone stock. But I keep getting questions about these. So. bike, one I'm always riding with, 250X, both been pretty reliable. <laughs> 